Uh, that's the apply code changes button. Awesome. So I don't have to take down the bot to make changes to it. That's pretty cool. It gives me a lot of flexibility here. Um, so, so, so. Um, Here, I guess I want to minimize um, everything other than the coding window. Yeah, we're all talking about I'm trying to get the bot working and move things and stuff. Um, Congratulations, you've been added. How do you feel? It only persists until the next time it restarts, so... Even if you go mad with power, it's still not going to do anything, because I've disabled all the commands. Um, but yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, man, there's an awful lot of chess logic here. I don't understand why there's all this. Um, but he did manage to get um, the bot moving pieces somehow. Um, so yeah, my next test is see, can I get it to move the cursor just once? And like, not lose complete control over my box here. No, I'm. You see, like, you're looking at the stream, right? I mean, the stream does. Yeah. The stream still continues to show um, laser chess. Uh, at this point, I'm just working on. Um, let me get the laser chess back into a more pristine state here. Uh, da 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 da. Not that you have to do all these take-backs to get a decent position. Oh, it's not unlimited take-back. Okay. Well, let's load new game. Um. And, yeah, I can set up the same funny little demo I set up earlier. Um, uh, pew pew. Pew pew. Alright, so that's laser chess. It's got a laser. That's my main point. I'm not showing off, like, how the pieces move and all that again right now. Um. Oh, Zug says it's fine to show code on stream. Let me check. <laughs> Just a credit card number at the bottom. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I see, I see. Uh, 
Um, So yeah, basically I've disabled almost all the commands until such time that I can figure out like how to configure this all to work for what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> yeah, there really isn't... Mm, it's very functional. It, it's, it's beautiful in its own way. Well, um... What do you mean you lost your admin powers? You know, you're still... Yeah, you're still listed under the admins there. Um, and at least until such time that the bot restarts. Um, yeah, no, I, I've disabled pretty much everything until I can parse my way through the code and figure it out. Um, let me see... Let me see... Okay. Yeah, we've got a move E2, E4, we've got arrow E4. It is, yeah, it's very well documented in that it's just transparent what the code's supposed to do. It's just for my own sanity, like, while I'm coding on the same box where um, uh, the code's deployed, uh, I've kind of disabled moving the mouse around until I can figure out how to enable it in a very limited, very, very, very limited fashion. Um, so... Okay. Looking at... Handle MSG. Hmm. Monosodium glutamate, right? It does log all the commands. Eh, okay. Got a thought. Um, so I'm going to introduce a new command. Um, actually, why am I using a string tokenizer at all? I don't need that. Um, we're going to do something a little trickier than string tokenization here. Oh. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to programmatically move pieces and all this stuff. Why are we looking at laser chess? Um, because I'm seeing if there's a way I can get um, laser chess to work here. Um, laser chess is kind of where I envision starting with this. I mean, we could certainly do this with um, what's already been done with the uh, Lee chess. Um, oh, well, if moves are sent through JSON, just install a packet capture program like, um, like Wireshark and see what the packets are that get sent over each time you move, and you can emulate that. Um, just see what the packets are and then duplicate those. Um, you don't have to use the interface. You do have to have some way to refresh the board, I guess. That'd get kind of messy. I don't know if that works. That's an interesting thought. Um, although, if I remember right, um, the packets that get sent over are in some kind of encrypted format 
not for the sake of encryption, but for the sake of just compressing the data. So yeah, replicating the packets that are sent would be actually kind of challenging. At any rate, um, I'm going to see, can, instead of me using a string tokenizer, can I do this some other way? So str.matches regex. Regex is going to be help dot star. Um, we're going to try this. Deploy. Help, help, help. Test. Awesome. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I guess we can see the code. Um, I'm confident enough that the code... Uh, I do want to hide my OAuth token before showing the code. That's the one thing I want to move away. Um, so give me one second to push that into some file somewhere. Uh, or maybe there's a way I can put... Yeah. Uh, I should put this OAuth token hidden away somewhere. Um, uh, one second while I figure out how to do all that. And then we'll put the code on stream. Um, uh, da -da -da. What do I want to call this file that's going to contain the credentials? Um, just a plain text file, obviously. Uh, <laughs> I could do it in XML. But no, I just want a plain text for now. Um, <laughs> what do I call it? Well, okay, yeah, I could make this as an argument to void main. Yeah. Let me do it that way. Um, I forget how to do that, but I can look it up. I've certainly done it before. Net beans main class arguments. Let's run that. How to set command line arguments. Da da da. Uh, run run file rather than run run main project. Uh, states the arguments parameter. Output window, click the yellow button. Oh, there's a button for rerun with parameters. Okay, there's property. Oh! I could use properties. That's probably a better way to do it, but we'll use these parameters for now, because that's how a uh, project used to work. Um, crap, where... Where in the runtime options do I add properties? General. That's not it. Um, there's got to be a way to define runtime properties or runtime parameters. Yeah, okay, I see. I found it. I found it. Um, so let me. Grab this. Uh, I have no idea what's the right way to do this, but I don't know if they are quote delimited or just comma delimited. Oh wait, no, this is it's Java we're talking about. Space delimit command line arguments. Um, click OK. That should work. So, how do I... Yeah, rerun. Debug project. 
and see if the bot comes back. Okay, at least I found the channel. Um, yeah, and I'm actually in NetBeans, because I really like NetBeans. Okay, and the bot's back. So I have successfully moved things away. Um, yeah, let me put the code on screen then. Uh, where's my screen capture? Uh, we don't need a screen capture, we just need... Uh, net beans. So uh, that's fine. Um, okay. So yeah, now we got that on screen. Um. I should probably change my game to Linux game development at this point. Or to, I'm sorry, not Linux game development, just game development. Um, just understandably, people are confused when previously I had a chessboard up here. Um, uh, dot, dot, dot. Close this, close that. Get control back over my stream. Okay. See, so yeah, we're just looking at some game development. Um, So yeah, this is the code. I don't know why people want to see this, but I guess it's more interesting than looking at the chessboard. Um, like I said, I've commented out almost all the commands. Almost all of them don't work. Um, and I was in the middle of starting to convert some of this handle message stuff. Um, I don't need a string tokenizer. Uh, oops. Um, it should be else if the message matches admins, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Don't need a string tokenizer anymore. Um, and now if I want to introduce a move command, um, borrow that and change it a little bit. Oh, let me redeploy code first. Um, yeah, string tokenizer is perfectly good. It's just I'm trying to do something a little more complex here. Um, uh, I'm going to use a regular expression. move and then capture group one this is going to consist of um, a to i one to nine a to i one to nine repeated twice because we're on a nine by nine chessboard you know maybe we should start with just valid chess notations so just like a to H, 1 to 8, and uh, matcher, matcher equals uh, pattern dot matcher on input string string, and we're going to say um, else if this force of habit. I want to actually put the brace on the same line here. This brace. There we go. Else if matcher dot matches uh, string move is equal to matcher dot group 
one, and we're going to execute the move. Um, um, regex is fun. It allows you to sanitize input data. Um, actually, before I do that, uh, TCH um, move uh, move. Okay, redeploy. Yeah, at least we're consistent. Um, awesome. It's excellent when my code does what it's expected to do. Um, uh, so, make move. Attempting move. Let's see, parse, blah, 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 okay. Um, so, I see that this is going to try to... Uh, I'll put attempting move here. Okay. Yeah, I figured CH stood for channel. That's cool. Um, let's see. Attempting move. And, you know, while we're at it, let's put in the move string that we're attempting to do. Um, try that again. Okay, so at least we got some sanity there. And I see down here it is trying, yeah, attempting move A1A1. So now I have to map that to coordinates of the laser chessboard. Um, Okay. Don't really care much about legality checking at this point. Um, oh, I see why you're doing the legality checking and stuff. Okay. That's cool. Um, so, so, so. check any of that. I guess one thing I will check is, are we supposed to be moving? There is this thing called pause here, right? Oh, it's called paused. Um, at least that'll allow me to recover my box if malicious people decide to do stupid things here. Um, <laughs> Look at that. Look at that 8 right there. That 8 has no shame. Uh, int ranks equals 8. Files equals 8. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, board width over files. Board height over ranks. Okay, that's cool. Oh, you do check for it. Okay, yeah, you're right. If, if we're checking for it, then all is well. Holy moly. You guys. You didn't... S you, you heard that, but you didn't see it. You remember this infinite loop I set up in laser chess? It's not infinite. 
that took like 15 some minutes um but yeah i've probably like seg faulted the game or something stupid like that um that's fantastic i've never seen this happen i have exploited the weirdest glitch ever um Okay. That's cool. Oh yeah, yeah, the game totally seg-faulted. That's awesome. Uh... Okay, we're gonna restart the game. And exercise the seg-fault again, because why not? Uh... That's cool. So, start by firing this. And fire the laser here. Not that we need this, but this is all set up work for the infinite loop. Play knight there, knight there, knight rotate, move here, knight rotate, move up here, and fire. And this is an infinite loop, or so I thought. Apparently if I leave it running long enough in the background, it seg faults. Um, which is pretty damn cool. Alright, so back to coding. Um, um, we dismiss this window, which I don't need open. And just focus on coding. Whoopsie daisy. I broke laser chess. Yes. Um, yeah, so Zug is right that since we're checking this somewhere earlier, somewhere, uh, somehow, um, yeah, I don't need to check this here. I'm totally not opening myself up to being exploited somehow. Um, okay, so yeah, we center... Um, Oh, okay, I get it. So you got a board width and a board height. We center the cursor above that, we press it, delay, move the cursor, um, and press it again. Um, and release the mouse. Yeah, using the robot library is a good call. Um, I. This code must have taken forever to write and test and make sure we get it correct. Um, uh, key release, VK shift. VK shift. So that must be the cursor or the, the mouse key or something. Uh, oh wait, no, that's the shift key. Um, you know, I don't need any of that at the moment. Don't need any of this at the moment. I'm just trying to strip this down to its most bare essentials. Yeah. Mouse move, delay. Um... Okay, let's see how this works. Rather than call this T, oops, that's not the way to refactor here. Rather than call it T, I will call it delay. Um, all right. Yeah, yeah, this this certainly takes great effort to write all this stuff and make sure it's all right, because, I mean, this is kind of why I begged for it, rather than me trying to try writing it myself. Um, yeah, laser chest should have some condition for exiting the loop. If you were here, like, a couple hours ago, I did suggest that's exactly what it should do, is... Test how many times have I looped, 
And if I've looped too many times, just say, you know what, we're done, we're going to explode things and move on. Um, so... Might regret this, but okay, let's move my cursor down here. Oops, that's not valid. Move E1, E4. Nice. Um, okay, we'll change the delay to 500, 500, save, propagate that again. Move E1, E4. Excellent. Um, oh, hang on. We'll do this a slightly different way. Rather than click and drag, we're going to do click, click. Um... Mouse move. Okay. And we're going to delay a little bit less in between. Okay. So now if I put my cursor back here and I type move E1, E4, there we go. I think it did click and release in each case. Um, in fact, we got this function click. <sighs> XY delay. So we move it to XY. We delay by delay. Click it however many times we're supposed to click it. Um, I'm going to say with the delay between each. Um, that's fine. Mouse release mask. So I could call this um, okay, see there we possibly borrowed somebody else's code. Um, so instead of saying mouse move, press delay, press delay, whatever, um, we're going to call click Suppose mouse release before we do everything this doesn't hurt. Um, and we're going to try. Again, since I'm not dealing with arrows, I can just do it this way. Uh, click here. Uh, if I were trying to get arrows and all that other fancy stuff working, yeah, I'd have to revert back. Um, So we click on square one, click on square two, with a quarter second delay between each click. Um, oh, and this delays the delay before the click. Um, whatever, we'll set that to something minimal. Not that I need it, but... Um, so if I save that... Okay, and uh, what do I do here? Oh yeah, so we're going to move our cursor here. Okay, so it clicks in both places. It's good. It's all very good. Um, Let's 
so we got all the basic clicking stuff down. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of fun commands there too. Um, which is why I, in the uh, command parser, disabled most of these so that that won't get exploited somehow. Um, Alright, and now I have to go back to my laser chessboard and figure out what are the dimensions of this image. Uh, oh, I got a print screen key here. That's cool. Print screen. Um, and open up paint or something. Okay. And our coordinates for this board are... Um, what can I not... Let's see, select. View... Okay, so 500 and... 500 pixels over to the right, and about 30 pixels down is where this starts. Um, now I'm gonna leave in the old coordinates here. Um, actually, okay, so this defines board width and board height. So let me stick with that paradigm. So 500 to 1120-ish. Um, so that's a width of... that looks like 625-ish. Where's my cursor? Oh, I got the exact cursor. Okay, it's, yeah. 620 is the width of the board. Um. So it's exactly 620 by 620. Starting at, what was I saying? It's starting at 500 by 20. Obviously, I'm going to have to change some of this flip stuff. Oh, these are where the buttons are located. Okay, that's clever. Okay. Yeah. Um. Can I redeploy? Oh, Eclipse doesn't let me do that, but NetBeans does. That's really cool. Um. Okay, so I don't need this inside there anymore. Uh, obviously we've got all these buttons that are... I should have kept the image. In fact, I still have it in my buffer. Let's, nope, I don't. But I should print screen this game, put it back into paint, and I can obtain the locations of all the buttons um, that are in that game. Let's see, where did I put ranks? Yeah, we're gonna make that its own member now. Uh, and we're gonna capitalize our constants because that's how I do it in Java. Um, change this to nine, change this to nine. Am I missing anything? No, this is good. This is all good. Save. Redeploy. Yeah. So unfortunately I've got to destroy the bot and bring it back up because I changed uh, variable scoping. Uh, so it's got to reconstruct everything. Unfortunately, I can't maximize the window here, or maximize the this part. 
Why is it trying to maximize and minimize that debugging pain? I don't understand. Um, it's just really confused at this point. I should probably close the project and reopen it. <laughs> yeah, point is probably more precise. Um, or I could use Java AWT Rectangle too, but you know, I'm not in here to change how it works. I'm here to change um, what we're using it for. I'm going to close NetBeans and reopen it. Because NetBeans seems quite confused right now. Oh, by the way, I added JSOUP and JSON, um, uh, added them in a folder I've called lib. Not that that changes anything, and Eclipse probably does it differently, but, um, uh, surely, surely there's some way to get this it used to be that double-clicking this would, like, full-screen the file. Uh, there we go. That's what it used to do. And I could undo that and debug project. Fancy, fancy. Okay. Um, a while ago, I minimized this variables pane because even though I'm debugging, I don't really care what's going on. I just want it to run and to hot swap code. Um, but yeah, I think at this point, um, Minus the fact that laser chess is locked up, we should be able to exercise this in laser chess. Um, so let me restart laser chess. And um, Okay, it's now full screen, yada yada. And this is deployed. Um, so we don't need to show that means at the moment. We're going to try this out, I guess. Um, okay. Move um, E1, E5. Okay, well, it's trying. Oh, did I comment out the actual movement of the cursor? That'd be pretty sad if I did. Um, let's see. Output. Oh, hang on. So if I try that again, uh, okay. So because I've changed something about the board, it's freaking out. Um, interesting.
Okay, for one thing, I did start the game paused. Uh, uh, or not paused. Never mind. Um, okay, I guess I'll full screen, or I'll show NetBeans again. So somewhere here, I've done something silly. Um, nope, nope, nope. Where's that whole thing? Okay, here's the thing I added about patterns. Um, expand that out to I and 9. Yeah, this is the part that I messed up. This right here. Um, and I just basically removed that part because I recognized that I would need um, at least until I redeploy, that's not going to take effect anyway. Um, but parse move. Again, we're going to ignore promotions. Um, there's different ways to do this. Um, ASCII 97 is a lowercase a, uh, 49 is a 1, I think. We'll find out when we go to test this. If move is legal, return move. Nope. Move dot is legal. Um, whoops, X has to be less than files. Uh, where are files defined again? Uh, <sighs> yeah, I defined it up here. Um, I'm gonna redefine this somewhere, but x1 has to be t between 0 and files, uh, y1 has to be between um, 0 and ranks. I know, right? Don't want to. We don't want to make our code readable. Why would you want to do that? Um, yeah. So I'm just gonna hate like the part where I like scrap this entire class and replace it with something else, which I'm totally not doing right now. But um, we'll just say that extensibility is an issue with this. Uh, Okay. Is not is legal, return false. Brilliant! Um, return... blah blah blah, I don't understand. Current position, x1, y1. And something something. Something about this to play. Oh. Okay, so you can't, like, capture your own piece and stuff. Fair enough. Um. So, by doing that, now I'm allowing you not only to try to capture your own pieces, but to play two-player. So if we wanted the channel to play against itself, now that would be legal, um, because we're not concerned about what color we're playing anymore. Um, okay, so we're going to try this again. Uh, 
Um. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's... You can't get things perfect the first time around. Um. Okay. Like here, I didn't get that perfect at all. E1, E8. So I kind of goofed on this in a major way. Um, LOL. Okay. <laughs> Oh, A1, H8. That's an interesting observation. Um, yeah. So I've goofed this in a major way. Part of it's probably because I didn't read the documentation before changing things. Um, A1, H8. Move A1... H8 again. Okay, so... Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I think I need to re-add the paused thing, because I messed with the code earlier. Um, oh, I get it. Yeah. Now if we're paused, um, and I try to do this move A1, H8, we'll actually be paused. Uh, hopefully. Okay. And if I unpause, and move A1, H8 again. Yeah. Cool. So now we have control over that. Um, so, 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 we're making progress, guys. Um, um, So, click was that convenience method that whereby I messed something up. Mouse move X, Y. X position, Y position. Okay. Um, let's see, what was our command for uh, logging things right now? Moving cursor uh, to X, comma, Y, although it should actually be Y, comma, X, shouldn't it? Um, yeah, whatever. We'll leave it X, Y. Moving cursor x equals x, y equals y. That's readable. Um, and for the sake of debugging this, yeah, I'm going to comment that out. And... 
deploy, open up our output console, clear it, unpause, okay, so that's the cursor, um, 806.530, let me put it somewhere in the center of the screen. And if I try move A1 H8, if I try that again, okay, did I get the same output or not? X534, Y530, 1010, 54. Now if I stick the cursor way over here somewhere and try that same command, do I get the same output? Yes. Um, so one thing I did change from the original code was this here. Um, I added a delay between mouse move and mouse press and all this stuff. Um, yeah, we were saying we don't need more than one click anyhow. Um, so, yeah, I don't need that either. Let's put the cursor in the corner, try this move A1H8 thing again, or let's stick with what we've tried thus far, which is move E1E4. Okay, so E1E4 seems to re reliably move the cursor back and forth between that, move E1E3, moves it not as far, move a1, A1, puts it there. See, I, I must have gotten the board dimension incorrect then. Um, so, um, we're, okay, here's my image. The board width goes from 500 beyond 1100, so that's 625. Uh, board height goes to 675-ish from about 20. I mean, this looks like a square board. Is this not a square board? Um, I mean, I guess it doesn't have to be. It sure looks square. What's our Ymax? Ymax is about 685. My Y minimum is about 30. So that's 655 high and 500 to. Uh, yeah, this, is, this board is not square. Okay. Um, I guess that means that I'm changing the code. Um, that feels so weird to do that. Um, okay, we'll see. <laughs> oh, don't use the chest thread thread. Okay. Oh, yeah. It's the standard light your computer on fire if somebody gets your source code. Part of the code. Um, okay. I9, I9. Oops, I have to unpause.
Okay, what have I borked? What have I... Okay, let's try just H8. Apparently that's off screen or something. So it thinks A1's over here. A1's really here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Let's try move B1, B1. Move C1, C1. Okay, so... I've done something tragically wrong here. Um, my coordinates are just off. So what I'm going to do is improve some of this logging here. Um, so... Uh, wait. Do I have the coding on stream? No. Okay, so what we're gonna do... Um... So it's attempting move, make move... Um... I assume I have access to TCH, that tell channel command from here. got to be some way to um, to detect where is the cursor. Um, There's got to be a way to get the current mouse location. I mean, that seems like a pretty fundamental thing to have. Second, we're going to look this up. Java robot mouse cursor. Oh, hang on. Okay, somebody else has come up with this question. Okay, there's a way to do it. Okay, so I guess the recommended way to get the current position is mouse info get pointer info get location. Thank goodness for Stack Overflow, right? Okay, and this returns a point. OK. 
Okay. Um, so rather than actually moving the mouse, we're going to just see like what it's going to try to do. Where it's going, coming from, where it's going to. Okay. That's weird. Uh, clear. Oh, there we go. It just took a while to redeploy. And so the reason that we're going to be dumping that to the channel is so we can do it this way, right? Um, so if I want to put my cursor over here somewhere, um, and I say move A1, A1, okay, it's aiming for 534, 530. What if I put the cursor right in the middle of the square? A1, A1. So apparently... Um, I've given it the wrong coordinates or something. Okay, what's our upper corner? Where is my cursor located? Huh? Apparently it doesn't like that. That's probably the cause of the problem is that it's only accepting a certain... Oh no. It's probably dividing by 8 instead of 9 or something dumb. Um, Okay, but 650 and 320 is the upper... Yeah, this is Laser Chess, um, an old MS-DOS game. And I'm trying to make this into something playable through chat. Um, uh, with the help of Zug Addict's um, bot. Uh, da -da -da. Um, so, what I've got to figure out is how to uh, move about the cursor and stuff. Here's our code. Um, oh. Okay, board X. Move to x1 times square width. I just need more verbose output. Um, x1, y1, x2, y2. Okay, we're going to try that. one x1 y1 y1 all right these are defined on the move attribute so we do like so and then x2 y2 give me some help as to what's going on Uh, oh. Um, and then 
board height is board height. Okay. Yeah, something I don't know yet. We're gonna find out in a minute. Um, if something's messed up. Um, so move A1, A1 should take the lower left corner. 620 by 620 are not the board dimensions, by the way. We've established that it's 620 by 650, I think. Um, okay. But A1... Hang on. What am I misunderstanding here? Um... I think I've got a pretty fundamental misunderstanding of where the zero zero corner of the board is. Um, so if I like try to say move h eight h eight, we're going from okay. So h yeah, I expect to have an x of zero. Um, Okay, so let me stick my cor cursor way up here in the upper left corner. Um, I mean, that might be the case. Okay, so my cursor in the upper left is pretty close to zero, zero. So that is correct. Um, that is correct. So yeah, A1 is the lower left corner. So if I do move A8, A8, yeah, our problem is that A9 is the topmost square, not A8. At least that's our first problem. Um, so I've expanded my board a little bit. Uh, chest move A1, A1. Ha ha! Ha ha ha! Damn it! I'm dealing with somebody else's code. You have to learn all these little idiosyncrasies. Um, yeah. Ranks minus one equals ranks minus one. This is why you don't use magic numbers in your code. Um, okay. Um, okay, we've got to restore our window so I can maximize this again. Yeah, we figured out our issue though. Um, it's magic numbers. Also, this is why you don't want to introduce many levels of abstraction, because each level you add on makes this just that much harder to debug, believe it or not. Um, <laughs> hey, I figured it out. So um, here we were using hard-coded numbers, and now I've replaced this with constants. Um, 
Now, if I remember right, at the top of this file, I declared, yeah, uh, public static final ranks equals nine, files equals nine. Um, There we go. That should at least deal with some of the corner cases. Yeah, so making progress. I figured out that I need to use a 9x9 nine nine board. Um, okay. Um... Hang on, chest move. There's a better way I could parse this. Uh, parse move. Make move. Before I get too carried away. Um, yeah, so... Okay. Um, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. Um, so. We're going to change our regular expression just a little bit here. Um, we're going to have four capture groups. Let's start with two. Um, so I have a single letter. A... Yeah. A to I. Obviously I'm going to need to change this later. Um, at such time that I want to do something more sophisticated. Um, now I've got four capture groups that capture the letter, the digit, the letter, and the digit. So we've got letter, digit, letter, digit. This is the matcher. Um, We already established all of that. And rather than passing in a string, we're going to pass in the matcher uh, here. Uh, parse move doesn't really. Um, we'll see how this changes. It's not a string anymore. Um, dang it. Let's rename that to move. Um, and if move dot matches, yeah, then we return null, because there's no chest move. Um, chest move. Move dot match. Oh, hang on. I've, I've overloaded the word move here. Um, you can't call it move, apparently. So let's go to parse move. Call this something. Um. Okay. 
And we're going to say if we don't have a match, return null. Um, okay. Oh. Um, does it need to be given a screen resolution? Actually, what ideally should happen is there should be an initialization routine where you click in the upper left and lower right. You click in all four corners and, I mean, this is a way to adjust to a screen resolutions on the fly, but we don't need to go that far. Um, so we're going to say move.group um, one, two, three, four. Um, now we happen to know that group one is a character. Uh, you might ask why this is even important. I argue that this is relevant because later on you might have boards that might be of greater dimension than 9x9. And so it's possible with the, these groups here, um, in fact, let me do this a little bit better. Um, we need to do, to adapt to larger boards, we need to do integer. Um, that value of uh, move that group two. Um, so here you can convert a string to an integer like so, convert for another string to another integer. So now this can handle boards of arbitrary size, um, at least upper bounded by um, maxint. Uh, uh, can handle boards that have width, I guess the width of the alphabet, which is 26, whatever. Um, uh, best move. So apparently by changing some things, I've broken something. Um, yeah, yeah, so here's the whole, um, enter your move now, and so forth, I'll come back to this later, um, that's clever, uh, when I do change this, yeah, uh, hang on, so where did I define my pattern? Um, um, I'm going to define the pattern way up here. Pattern compile. Uh, case insensitive. Actually, no. This is good. I mean, it could make it case insensitive, but I don't really care at this point. Um, move pattern will be like so. Um, and now to address my compile error. Um, I'm going to put a brace there. 
um, and say that there we go. So we're going to move according to um, something that's been parsed. Uh, hopefully that's going to be a legal move, but you never know. Um, let's see. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a good question. Should this be... How do we do this? Minus one or minus zero? Um, oh. Yeah. Um, let's try it this way. Just keep it as simple as possible. Because uh, you do have the minus one elsewhere. I forgot about that. Yeah, you have ranks minus one, minus from Y. Um, this used to say seven minus from Y and seven minus two Y. So you've already negated it. Actually, if I were to change that and change that, let's see, why is this important again? Oh, okay, I get it, I get it. Yeah, so when we invert the move, not that I'm ever playing with an inverted board, but um, we could now perform inversion like so here. Um... Yeah, that's confusing. Yeah, so we start with like A1, A1. If you flip that, it becomes H8, H8. Or in this case, I9, I9, I9. Um, yeah, that definitely explains one-off behavior. Um, it's funny, this is legal routine. Um, it's now kind of unnecessary. I mean, all we're checking is that the value is not equal to undef, which it shouldn't be, because, um, uh, well, I mean, what construct, what uses this constructor? Um, Dang it, how do I find... find usages? Yeah, I get that, I get that. Um, MIDI move. Um, I think I could survive without this MIDI move thing. Um, I'm gonna see what I break by doing that. Um, you can always add that later. Uh, I just <laughs> I want to do MIDI stuff. I've got a MIDI keyboard. It's not a priority at the moment, but at some point I'd like to add it back in. That's cool though. You got a chest scale here. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Um. Just think of all the fun we could have debugging this. Um, if we could use sounds to help debug it. All right. Um. I don't need that. Um. Oh, you were trying to play chess with the keyboard. That's cool. Okay, so... If I 
unpause. It unpauses. Um, and if I try to move A1, A1, Cade now recognizes that we have an offset of 8 for A1. Um, And so now if I go back, um, if I go back here, and I stick my cursor over here, how close am I to A9? Okay, 534 and 56. Let's see, how close is that to here? Seventy-seven. Okay, so how close is fifty-six to here? In fact, let's try the other corner of the board. Let's try A1. How close am I? That's not far off. Okay. And if I try I9, or I1, Okay, well, it's not perfect, but at least it can detect. Okay, I wonder if I try the middle square. Okay. So I might not have all the offsets perfect, but this should be good enough for me to at least um, enable moves and such. So let me go don't need paint. Actually, at some point I'm going to go back to paint. I don't need paint anymore to measure things on the screen because now I'm able to measure things through um, the IRC channel. Um, okay. Let's deploy that. And move the cursor down here. Move C5. Wait, no. Move D5, F5. Um, it's not exactly right. Okay, so I'm apparently finding the lower bound of a square. Or not. Something's not entirely correct here. Um, let me add in some more logging. Apparently I do need to re-enable that. Can't say why. Um, So I stick my cursor way up here. So in fact, let's exit, re-enter. Um,
confused. Is my screen resolution lower or something because I'm using this this thing? I get the sense that something is confused by the fact that I'm using this one special screen. Yeah. Okay, so... Um... That's the conclusion here, I guess, is that because I'm using DOSBox, I can't figure out where the cursor is. Like, it thinks the cursor's at, not at zero, zero here. Um, or it's trying to move the cursor, but really confused over how to move it. Um... Can I move to the upper left corner and just keep moving and moving and moving and moving and then I say move A989 Yeah It's not measuring where my cursor's at So it's because I'm using this um, flash game or DOS box or whatever, um, I'm losing my cursor. some kind of virtual cursor within this instance. Uh, okay. This is getting way more complicated, unfortunately, because um, when I click on the screen, steals my cursor. Um, that's the issue. So, how do I work around that? Um, do something more fancy with robot to get it to work um,
disappointed that because I'm using flash, I can't detect where my cursor's at. I can certainly try to move the cursor, but detecting where it's at is hugely problematic. And yet somehow I'm able to mouse info get pointer info and such. Um, Man, I'm going to have to write my own translation method that figures out where the cursor's actually at and where to put it. That's ugly. That does not appeal to me at all, but... Um, okay... Uh... Yeah. I'm having small issues here, you know? So I'm accurately able to pick up where the cursor's at, right? Um, no, I'm not. 640 by 360. So I'm not able to pick up the cursor's location in any respect here. And I need a way to do it. Um, Trying to figure out, is this even doable with Flash? Java, Flash. Flex is another keyword that apparently is knowing more about. I've got a really not a strong feeling about this. Not a strong good feeling. Um, So I have to know more about this particular thing that's how this is being deployed. Um, either that, or I just need to run it locally. It's probably a better solution. Um, Surely there's some way to download this. Or to extract it from my disk. Because I do have a disk that has this game. Um, okay. Yeah, I've got to get... Um, got to get this game somehow. Ok, 
making it in a entirely legal fashion, just copying it off of my floppy drive, which I have conveniently located right next to my computer. Um, Also going to need a DOS box to run older programs on Windows. Um, Install DOSBox. Let's get laser chess out here. Um, make a new folder. Um, and see if I can DOS box this. Okay. Anybody know how to use DOSBox? <laughs> um, There's definitely ways to use DOSBox, I'm just trying to figure it out. Also, what am I streaming at the moment? Oh, I'm streaming the source code. Okay. That's cool. Um... Yeah, we'll leave that up and running while I'm trying to get this going. Uh... Okay, does anybody know how I can, um, well, okay, I guess intro is the intro command. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Got it, got it. Um. Cut. 
paste. And L C colon laser chess. L, L colon, dir, dir, uh, laser. Okay, we got laser chest, guys. Um, okay, expanded that a little too much. That's right, this is from a day where screens were a different size. Uh, oh, hang on. Properties. Entire window. Properties. Inner window. There we go. Now we've got this. Um, fit the screen. There we go. Beautiful. Save. Oh, that only took us way longer than it should have. Okay. Yeah, I wish. It would be awesome to get this game on Lee Chess, would it not? Um, Okay, well, I've got one small issue here, and that's that this window is not in a fixed position. Uh, so if I move the window around, <laughs> uh, moves my cursor relative to the window and all that fun stuff. Um, Wait, there's ways to adjust this in Windows, right? Oh, dude, I can control this with the keyboard. That's cool. Uh, it goes all the way around. I forgot about that. Not that key presses are the way to do this, but... Um, Yeah, one thing is that um, there's scalability concerns when you release stuff. And so initially it sounds great, just make everything in the world, and then somebody's got to keep the server up and running. That's the real issue, or the bottleneck, at least as I see it. Um... Okay. Get location. Um, now there's got to be a way to get the Windows location. Um, Graphics device screen. Oh, that's for okay, screen, not for a window. Um, Java window location. Nope. Uh, Java active window location. Yeah, I don't think that that's what I'm looking for. GNA.
Java Native Access. Okay. You know, we'll deal with that later. Um, in the meantime... Oh. Um... Yeah, let, let me see if I can provide you some basic information about how LeechS works. It's written in a combination of Scala, uh, Clojure, Nginx, uh, JavaScript. Like, it's written in many languages, most of it's Scala. Uh, let me get you the guide, though. Um, if you're interested, this is what it takes to set up your own LeechS instance. A little while ago, Zug tried to do so, and um, I just discovered it would be a time-consuming process. Um, Let's see. That's cool. Somebody's trying to um, make a Scrabble thingy majigger. Um, keep on top of what he's doing there. Not that I need to touch that right now, but it's still cool to see things being developed. Um, Okay, so back to coding and stuff. So for the purposes of this demonstration, just for argument's sake, um, I need to grab the position of a corner. Uh, um, actually, Beats, you may discover um, that the install instructions have changed. Oh, to activate a localized instance. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by that. Um, certainly it's non-trivial to activate, but... Um, hang on. Okay, cursors at 864, 261. Um, so I need to update these constant. 